Welcome, one and all, to the mystical world of Felbar. Adventures abound throughout this realm, and we appreciate the opportunity to regale you with some stories from these trails. These accounts are all based on actual RPG experiences that occurred within Adventures in Felbar. Some of these tales may be for mature audiences, while others may be for very immature audiences. We now present the sage Mikas Tumo from Tamel, also known as the Bard of Felbar. Welcome to Session Denali-43. The last episode featured the quartet of Grish, Stance, Harris, and Sir Omel finally securing mounts and reaching the head of Tigos Vale, before also being ambushed by some gnolls. The melee ended poorly for the large humanoids, and the group made it to the mining colony with only minor injuries. After getting in a meal and some much needed fluid, they were appalled to find out that their meal had been Kanta. We rejoin them as Grish throttles the innkeeper against the wall. Where did you get the bird, man? yelled the large Zenobian. The patriots of the establishment quickly jumped to their feet and were clearly angry about the treatment from the captain of the Green Guards. Grumbling was heard as Stance, Harris, and Omel formed a line between Grish and the angry crowd. Uh, you probably can't understand you, Grish, pointed out a concerned knight of Bacchus. The Denali language was used, and Grish eased his grip on the man, lowering him to the ground so he could speak. The pair spoke quickly as the three companions tried to calm the crowd who could not understand them. Anytime, Grish, pointed out Harris the mage, who quickly uttered out a spell and also began to speak in the Denali language. His quick speech seemed to slightly calm the angry crowd who began to yell at the mage. A few moments later, the door opened and three disheveled guards wandered in and observed the angry scene. They quickly pulled their weapons, leading to a precarious standoff with Sir Omel and Stance, who quickly advanced to cover Harris. The innkeeper spoke quickly and then pointed to the guards, and Grish released him. Hold! boomed the cleric. I am Grish, captain of the Green Guard, and I demand to know where you got the Kanta. The three guards looked at each other, and one of them spoke in the common tongue. Two riders came in a few hours ago, and the beast had been killed by Noel Arrows. The riders were unconscious and were taken to Sarcona at the edge of town. Grish pus pushed through his associates and demanded to know the status of the pair. The scared guard shook as he answered and updated the quartet. The little one was in bad shape and appeared to have been poisoned. The woman smashed her head on a rock as the Kanta died and was unconscious. The beast was dead and we... but the man was cut off as Grish poked him into the chest. Take us to our friends now, he demanded. A shaking of the head followed and the three guards went outside. Harris, speaking in the Denali dialect, tossed the innkeeper a bag of 15 gold coins and apologized to the crowd for the misunderstanding. The proprietor gleefully showed off the cachet of coins to the patrons, whose mood changed instantly. The quartet followed the three guards to the edge of town where an adobe home was present. Skulls of different animals adorned the exterior of the house, and the guards pointed to the entrance but would go no further. The quartet ran to the door and beat on it loudly. A moment later, a spindly old woman opened the door and demanded to know what the problem was. Grish was apologetic and inquired about their associates. The woman, speaking in common, looked at each adventurer up and down and advised them that there were two in her care, but they would remain so until they could speak for themselves. Grish's face turned beet red and he began to yell at the woman, who calmly reached into her blouse and pulled forth a totem with a strange seal on it. Grish immediately shut up and bowed deeply to the woman and backed away. We will return in the morning if it suits you, Sarcona. She nodded politely and closed the door. As Grish spun around, he found the other three with crossed arms staring at him. Puzzled, Stance spoke. A uh, little bit confused here. It appears as though you are going to rip off her arms, and then you cowered like a schoolboy. 
uh, Explained, and Vidius, and Yolanda, and what's that necklace all about? The cleric composed himself and began to explain. Sarcona is commonly referred to as a witch in your parts, but in our land, she is an experienced healer. The totem represents her as a healer of the house of our previous king, and she is a respected woman. I was wrong at my approach and let my emotions take over. Phidias and Yolanda are in the best hands in the kingdom, and if anyone can make them better, it is Sarcona. I suggest we find a place to stay and wait for word from her. Uh, we may want to house the mounts as well before they become our next meal. Pointed out a wry brother stance. They shook their heads in agreement and headed back to the tavern to retrieve their mounts. As they approached, they observed a young boy leading the large animals towards the back of the building. He was stopped and Grish spoke with him for a few minutes before turning back to the others. How much money did you give that guy, Harris? According to the kid, not only are the animals going to be stabled, but we also have rooms? Harris responded and admitted that the sum was a bit extra considering the flare-up caused by Grisha's actions. He confirmed that he did eh, possibly overreact, but thanked the mage for covering his response. The group followed the boy to the stables where the animals were led into their own pen with a sign on it. Sir Omel asked what the sign said and Grish smiled and replied, Do not eat. The boy led them to a small inn where each was given a room. With the day's events behind them, each secured their doors and quickly fell asleep in reasonable beds. The next morning, a young woman knocked on the door and gave the group members each a plate of hot food and a cup of ale to drink. She had no information on Yolanda or Phidias, and the quartet opted to investigate the town to see what they could see. We close out this episode now and give you our thanks for listening. Please subscribe to this podcast and don't forget to follow us on Twitter at The Bards Podcast. For everyone in Adventures at Philbar, thanks for listening.